Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I do anything else, I have to show you my shirt. I think you can figure out who gave that to me. Um, <clears throat> and also, before I get to the news, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and supporting me. It's amazing what's going on on my channel. I'm just absolutely amazed and stunned. So thank you very much. You're very special to me. For today's news, I have several articles. The first one is entitled, Whistleblower Toxic Forever Chemicals Found in Nearly All Humans, Research Findings Ignored by Maker. Um, this article is interesting in that it talks about uh, chemicals that apparently are very commonly used in many different things. And uh, we scientists don't really know what, if any, impacts these chemicals have and what a, a dangerous level of them in the body is. And so it's really a... Un, unsettled area of science that's still being researched. But I thought you might find the article interesting, so I included it. I'm going to read a couple paragraphs from it. Chris Hansen told ProPublica that early in her career, after her lab confirmed again and again that almost no blood remained free of the contaminant. She was shunned by colleagues and questioned by superiors until ultimately she left for another department. Hansen convinced herself that the chemicals were safe at low levels. But experts say PFAS, known as Forever Chemicals, PFAS, do not break down in the environment and accumulate in the body. They've been linked to developmental delays, di diabetes, obesity, liver problems, and certain cancers. And according to ProPublica, companies are still using them, or chemicals that degrade into them, in countless products including dental floss, makeup, nonstick cookware, and hand sanitizer. PFAFs are used in explosives, semiconductors, cleaning fluids, and batteries the government depends on. So, uh, obviously, these things are everywhere, and we don't really know what their impact is. And so, kind of interesting. You might want to do some research to find out more about it, and uh, I don't know if it's even possible to find a way to avoid them completely. Uh, just part of our modern world, you know. The second article that I have, Hospital Finds Out Denying Prescribed Ivermectin to COVID Patient Grounds for Wrongful Death Suit. Um, the hospital, I, I, under, uh, I highlighted this one section. The hospital basically uh, sought protection under what's called the PrEP Act, which supposedly exempted hospitals and vaccine makers from any liability in the event of problems with COVID-19. But the New York Supreme Court, court ruled, uh, rather in stunning contrast to South, Nassau, South Nassau's assertions, the complaint alleges with particularity that South Nassau acted wrongfully and negligently by repeatedly refusing to administer ivermectin to the decedent, notwithstanding it having been prescribed and despite clear evidence in the medical records that the decedent's condition showed significant improvement once the ivermectin treatment was initiated, the justice said, quoting from the complaint. So basically what this story is about is that the Supreme Court of New York has authorized the lawsuit of this man who lost his wife to COVID uh, to go forward and... Uh, it may set a precedent that can be used against other providers who, in this case, particularly the woman was prescribed ivermectin and yet they refused to give it to her. 
even after they knew that it improved her health. It's everything about COVID just is so wrong, so completely wrong. It's so against science. It's so against ethics. It's so against everything that we would expect from the medical profession that it just boggles the mind. This next article that I have is entitled Health Officials Tried to Evade Public Records Laws and Lawmakers Say. Uh, excuse me. Health Officials Tried to Evade Public Records Laws Lawmakers Say. Now, <clears throat> this is a New York Times article, so I want to read this to you because I want you to think about what it says. House Republicans on Tuesday accused officials at the National Institutes of Health of orchestrating, quote, a conspiracy at the highest levels, unquote, of the agency to hide public records related to the origins of the COVID pandemic. And the lawmakers promised to expand an investigation that has turned up emails in which senior health officials talked openly about trying to evade federal records laws. The latest accusations coming days before a House panel publicly questions Dr. Anthony S. Fauci, a former top NIH official, represent one front of an intensifying push by lawmakers to link American research groups and the country's premier medical research agency with the beginnings of the COVID pandemic. That push has so far yielded no evidence that American scientists or health officials had anything to do with the coronavirus outbreak. Wait, what? What? <laughs> you just got done reporting that they made, let me see if I can read it exactly. Um, uh, a conspiracy at the highest levels of the agency to hide public records related to the origins of the COVID pandemic. And yet they say has yielded no evidence that American scientists or health officials had anything to do. Well, if they had nothing to do with it, why did they feel it necessary to hide the information they had? If they had nothing to do with it, they would have published it, wouldn't they? And say, look, here's the evidence. We're not involved. The very fact that they hid it is indicative of their culpability. And yet the Times tries to slough it off as, ah, you know, there's no evidence. I talked about this yesterday, I think it was. The, 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 the media will often use that term, no evidence, to try and slough off claims against something or say it's a conspiracy instead of actually dealing with the facts. And here's another clear-cut case of it. So you can do with that whatever you want. And finally, I have an article which I'm not going to read to you, but I just want to put it up on the screen so you can see it. And of course, as I always do, I'll put the links in the description for you. This is called The Dark Side of Wikipedia. It's a Cheryl Atkinson article, and the subtitle is It's Billed as the Encyclopedia Anyone Can Edit. In reality, it can be the opposite. This is an interesting uh, article describing the edit process, which is kind of getting underneath the covers of Wikipedia and talking about what goes on amongst the editors that have control of Wikipedia and what they're trying to do with that control to get a certain narrative across. It's an interesting article, and I think if you use Wikipedia for anything, you might be interested in learning exactly how this is all going on behind the scenes. And, and what it is. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, I'm the primary editor on an article on Wikipedia called The Massacre at Way. And I can assure you that that article is factually accurate because I have to constantly fight with, with the Vietnamese communists who come in and try to alter the article. And so far, I've been successful at fighting their attempts to amend the article. It's my understanding that the Vietnamese article is quite a bit different and not nearly as factual, the Vietnamese version of Wikipedia. And that's because the Vietnamese Communist Party controls it 
And so they want it to say what they want it to say. They don't care what the truth is. So that's the news that I have for today. I want to thank you for coming to my channel. Oh, and one more thing I do want to mention. Um, I said yesterday that I was going to show my shirt on every video, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to show the shirt today on every video, but I will also state in every video that going forward, I will only show my shirt in the daily news clips. So if you want to see the shirt I'm wearing, you're going to have to go to daily news clips. Otherwise, you don't get to see it. There you go. I pray for you. I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you will be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray for the same thing for every single person that you love. And more than anything else, I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.